everyone DJ Porkchop hanging on the garage with you tonight on a Tuesday up to no good now nah, we're up to something it's awfully good if not oh well, well, now nah, it's all good but anyway just hang out tonight just made a stimulator video there just chit-chatting back and forth with a fella figured I just do a quick little bench chat I don't know what else you want to call it Coffee time with DJ Porkchop. There you go. But anyway, I'm here. I got the old hound dog with me. I'm sure she'll chime in and make her appearance here in a minute, maybe. But, uh, nah, I just haven't been up to a whole bunch. I got a lot of projects going on, but I haven't done a one of them, uh, except for this 1911. But, uh, I don't know. Just. Since the, I got my spinal fusion done in August there, I've, I've made a video or two with updates. Um, I've had that brace on the whole, supposed to have it on now. I'm not released by my doctor yet, but it is what it is. Um, but that thing was a hindrance. It was hard to do anything. It irritated me, agitated me. I didn't want to make videos, didn't want to talk about it, didn't want to do nothing. Made it hard to come out here and work on it because I got that brace on it solid right here. And it had that thing. I couldn't lean over my bench because my chair is so short. Couldn't lean over my bench. Christmas list, I need a new chair, wifey. Um, I need a new stool for the old bench. Um, so yeah, it made it hard to do anything. I did. I did get to work on a Taurus PT-1911 uh, um, it was my stepdad's he he brought he, he, correction he actually was the one that did the work I sat here and guided him uh, nonetheless I didn't get no footage of it I really wished I would have but uh, so basically that trigger on that thing was garbage I'm talking garbage. Not only was it ha it was it was breaking it. I think we did a use the old. I don't have a lineman gauge. I just got this old spring uh, wheeler gauge. Work it, it, it works. Um, we did a three pull on it and pull. It was pulling seven seven four seven six seven eight somewhere in there. So that's a heavy trigger. Um, we fiddle with it and fiddle with it and fiddle with it. I told him what to do, and uh, I think it really wasn't that bad. I was a little intimidated with it being a Series 80. A um, couple extra lawyer parts in there. That was pure entertainment. Um, actually, it came apart and went right back together, no problem. I, <laughs> he, uh, I got all these junk tweezers from good old Harbor Freight, and I got a whole set of them, two three dollars and various all kinds of these they work like a champ especially if we're getting that disconnector and everything up in there they work like a champ but uh we got her down to about four and a quarter for them uh i had him ink his sear make sure it was wearing properly and evenly um took the creep out of it with the 45 you know one third on the back of the sear that worked out pretty good um Passed all function tests, everything, it, you know. And it, it was not freehand either. I got, you know, jigs and all kinds of stones and stuff like that. Um, so it worked out really well for him. We, I think, we got, like I say, we got down, I think it was four or four and a quarter pound pull. Smooth. Real smooth. Um, what I did determine a few things about that PT-1911. Them magazines are pure garbage. Dog, you're going to burn your nose. That's hot. Sorry. She's discovering a kerosene heater, I think, for the first time ever. Um, so, I I don't like that ambidextrous safety on that gun. If it was mine, I'd yank that safety out, and f that thumb safety out, and fit a new one. Um, I would put an oversized uh, mag release button on it, which I need to do to mine, too. I was going to talk about that here in a minute. Um, you'd load a magazine and put it in there and brack one round well you'd brack the first round take a shot with it it'd jam the second one wouldn't load 
it just hang on the feed ramp it wouldn't go nowhere and the feed ramp was smooth it was mirror smooth um so we i handed him my magazine he has sort of the Taurus mags, the ones that come with the Taurus. Um, and it's not that old of a gun, neither. I think they're just junk magazines. I, I could be, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I handed him mine. Mine's got the hybrid follower on it. It's a checkmate. Um, he loaded five in it. Five, I don't think, he might have went with a full, full se seven, I think. That's all my checkmate will hold is seven. Um, Popped every one of them out of there. Not a one of them jammed up. And tried it again with his magazine that jammed right up right after the first one. So he quickly understood that he needed to put them magazines up and uh, get new magazines. We didn't get to test his second one because he actually left it at home. Uh, it was an eight-hour drive away or so, so we weren't going to go get that magazine. Pardon me. Coffee check. Got to have a drink of coffee. Uh -oh. Anyway, um, what else about that gun? It's got a typical Taurus finish on it. It wears easily. Um, not a big fan of all the big, giant lettering and everything on the side of it. I'm not a big... If they could have just made them small, I, you know... Are big. I don't. I'm not a fan of that. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I mean, it, it wasn't a bad gun. I think if it come along at four hundred bucks, and I had four hundred dollars, there's a difference between having it and having it to spend. If I had four hundred dollars to burn, I, I might consider one, but I don't know. So. I didn't get a, you know. Oh, and another cool thing about that too, I took my 1911 out. It's the first time I ever shot this gun since I built it. You know, I made a few videos in the past. The only problem I have with it is it has an extended ejector on there, and I don't know if this camera is going to pick up on it. But if you look at that round, I think it's right here on this edge. You'll see an extractor mark, and I mean, I'm sorry, an ejector mark in there. I had to take and bevel that up, put a little bitty bevel on. It was very sharp. Um, I haven't got a fire yet, but I'm hoping that solved the problem. The extractor functioned perfectly. No jams, no nothing. Uh, that was the first time that I had got to get out. You're going to burn your nose. That's the first time I got to get out with my stepdad and shoot a gun. Oh. I'm 45 now. I probably haven't got a fire gun with him since I was in probably fourth grade, fifth grade maybe. So that was pretty cool. Um, I got out of guns for a really long time. I went with motorcycles and three wheelers and you know, four wheelers and girls and women. I didn't have time for that. Um, now, so that was pretty cool. I actually got to go out and pop a few rounds off with them and have some fun with the old 1911s. Um, so we discussed that my brass and it was every single one of them and this thing was ejecting. I had hit, I, I wish I would have got a video of it but I, I, just, I didn't have my camera with me and I, I, can't, I don't have no range footage on my YouTube. But uh, these were all kicking out at about the four o'clock and they were they were shooting at least eight nine yards away which i thought was a little much but nonetheless they were making it that far i had one flyer that probably went about 10 12 yards and the rest of them were dropping at about the six to the eight yard category maybe nine you know somewhere around there um but they all had that they all had that ejector mark right here on the Right there on the uh, the case. So hopefully that problem solved. Um, I did. I talked about it before. And by the way, I have this out here. There is no magazine in it. Safe direction. There's nobody that way. It is empty. Verified. There's my dog. 
Come here, Nala. Come here. But, uh, I want that off. There's that. Here's that checkmate mag I was talking about. That follower in there. That baby actually works a treat. It works really good. Um, I'm going to try to get another one. If not, I'm just... And I heard they make these for Wilson Combat, too. Checkmate does. Does anybody know that? Does, does that ring true? Um, one thing I did learn about this gun... I think I might have did a video before on this, but I got these shock buff. I'm part, I got my Allen wrenches in there for this gun, too. I got these shock buff. Um, it's an aluminum frame. I thought, well... This supposedly the shock buster is supposed to stop your frame from getting beat all to smithereens, and it's aluminum too. So I thought, well, you know, for five bucks, or whatever it was, or six of them in there, um, I'll give it a try. Whenever I installed it, my mag, my uh, uh, slide will lock back on an empty mag, you cannot slingshot it. We did have this discussion before. I remember talking with uh, Insight Freedom. Go check his channel out, by the way. Shout out. Um, so there is this slingshot clan, like me. You just grab it and pulls. And then there's one, say, drop the, you know, the slide stop. Drop it. And uh, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and go with that theory. If you notice on mine, let me do this real quick. My dog's trying to get my door. I got it locked in. Mine does not have that... Uh, fancy extended one on there where I can actually get up there with a thumb and get to it that I'm going to change out I'm going to definitely change that out um, once again this magazine release it works it's functional but I want to put an oversized magazine release in there I'm flirting with the idea of picking up a checkering file 20 line per inch checkering file Maybe this is 30 on the back, and it's really super duper fine. I don't know if I'm going to go 30 or not, because I'm not sold on this mainspring housing. I might go with the Magwell. Um, might. I don't know yet. Um, think about checker in this. Giving it a try. Because um, there, there's probably a 90% probability this frame's going back to stealth arms anyway, and I'm going to get a new frame. And uh, redo this one from scratch. Cause, uh, I'll, sh I'll show you. Well, I might make it in this video. I'm not real sure. Anyway, my barrel seat. I, I, I don't. It cut stupid whenever I was cutting it. it. I don't know what the deal was. But anyway, with this, what I did was I. It was pulling a seven and a half pounds too. Um, Um, obviously that's not good enough. Nice crispy thumb safety. Um, I got this one down. To, I think I'm, I'm, it's breaking at like three and a quarter ish. I'll never carry this gun. It's only used for paper anyway and steel. Well, it's going to be if I can ever get to the range again. Um, so that's not a big deal to me. I'm not worried about liability really. Um, it, 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 fu it functioned flawlessly whenever I fired it, other than that, the marks on that casing. The recoil on this baby was actually incredibly smooth, I thought, compared to... I got a P, uh, PT-111 uh, G2. Um, that baby is snappy in 9mm compared to the, this 5-inch 1911. Um, what all I do to this thing since I've talked to you last, I got my... Uh, over travel set. Uh, my take up. This one don't have the take up tabs on it. See, either I'm, I'm probably going to get a new trigger for it. There goes my dog. Because it's got a little play right here that I'm not real happy with. And uh, let's see. What else? What are the lies can I tell you? I got new grips for it. Cannot show them to you. But I got them. Probably won't be able to show them to you for another two months. A secret got out a little early. I mean, I feel really bad about it. Come here, Noah. Come here. Come on. Come on. Quick crane. But, uh, awesome grips. Um, I need to, one thing I'm struggling with is finding anybody where I can get 
my frame and my slide uh, stamped with information on it. People have told me I'm stone cold stupid for wanting to do that, but how do I identify this gun if it ever gets stolen? How do I identify it to the cops? All right. And I mean, obviously, if this gun comes up missing, I'm going to report it to the cops because if something happens with it, I'm on the hook for that. Especially if like a 14 year old gets that that's, and shoots something, I'm on the hook for murder. So, you know, that's definitely an issue. I did work that thumb safety. I know you can't see it, but you can hear it. That baby's crispy. Now it's real interactive. It wasn't at first. I wish it was a little more interactive when I lower it, but it's not. And uh, I'm going to pause this briefly and let my dog out, and we'll be right back. Alrighty, doggies out. We're back. Um, was talking about the safety. What else did I do to it? I uh, stoned the trigger tracks. I didn't have a trigger stone, so what I do... Chopstick from Fujiyama. <laughs> I took uh, my rotary tool, my, my win. I took it down to size where it fit right in there. And then I took on my anvil, a real fine piece of sandpaper, real super duper fine. I went over it and just undersized it good enough. I got these little bitty strips of like, they're like fine, like 2000 grit, if not finer sandpaper. Stuck them to that, stuck it in there, and smoothed them tracks right up. Um, the same thing. Let me put this on safe so I don't drop my hammer. Back here where the trigger goes, I also smoothed all that out inside of there. Speaking of the hammer, I took and stoned both sides of the hammer to get all the high spots off. There's quite a few high spots. Um, it operates a lot smoother. Average trigger job. There's a million videos on YouTube show you how to trigger job on these. Disclaimer: If you don't know how to do it, don't do it. Take it to somebody who does. Um, I would. I would. I'm not licensed to, so I can't. I don't have the insurance, so I can't. If I only got a million and a half, two million covers on me, I'm not doing trigger job on somebody's gun. So, that being said, I did some more work in here. Um, do do what I do. I did clean the barrel seat up a little bit, even though, even though it's bad. It, it's it's it it's functional. Everything works good, but it's, it just looks bad, and I don't want it looks bad. So that's why it is still a bare frame because I think this one's going back to Stealth Arms. They have a once in a lifetime oops clause. What's an oops clause? Made a mistake, cut the rails wrong, cut the barrel bed wrong, you did something wrong and it just, you don't like it. You can do that one time. You can send them 50 bucks in your old frame back and they'll send you a brand new one. One time. That's it. That's all you get. Um, I'm thinking about taking advantage of that. I'm not real sure. I might save that option for a future build if I get to do another one. That's why the frame's not done yet. And two... I'm really thinking it. I've been taking some uh, Scotch Brite to this. I know it doesn't show in this video very well, but you can tell the difference between right here and say up in here. I've been going like like you do with brushed brushed aluminum or something. You go in one direction and one direction only. Lift and pull. Lift and pull. Lift and pull. I've been working on that to try to get that polished up a little bit, and I was gonna th think about. It either using clear Cerakote on it or uh, anodizing it clear one of the two maybe an anodized and a clear Cerakote I don't know I don't I don't know what to do with it yet I gotta get it etched I stamped I, I, I'm having issues finding somebody to do that for me um unless anybody has any homegrown recipes on self etching machines like old Larry Potterfield uses I know I've seen them you know but pe people's opinions on those vary you know how to do it I've seen it done with a battery charger and nails and salt and water and what works I, I'm not real sure so um oh man the only other thing I can really tell you about this pile is uh everywhere something rubbed disconnector in the spring wherever it rubbed it was stoned um 
Larry Ryan was stoned. I didn't get stupid ridiculous on the grease. I'm usually, or right, lube, I'm usually a ballast off fella. I do have a couple of few cans of rim oil. Right, gun bench got to have some rim oil. I did use this time around, and I, by no means am I saying this stuff worked. I don't know. I, I got it when I was in SDI for my cleaning lab, and I didn't get to use it. I actually forgot to use it. Um, but at least I said that in my video. I didn't try to hide the fact. I used uh, Spartan's Accuracy Oil in there. What I'm thinking about doing is putting this on a piece of metal and putting some other lubes on a piece of metal and stick them in my deep freeze for a week and pull them out. See which one got hard and which one still is uh, doing its job. I don't know if this one does or not, but I just used like a drop on the rails wherever I needed to. Just a drop. I didn't. I didn't go stupid crazy with it like I used to. I used to. I wasn't. Is there such thing as an overliber? So I don't know any other lies I can tell you. Um, besides this old gun here. Um, I did tell you guys about the snap caps, the A-Zoom, and the mother ones, uh, the orange tip ones. If, if not, you need to check that video out. Don't fall for them orange tip, uh, or in case you didn't see that video. Go look these up. The ones with the orange tips, I highly recommend you stay away from those. You can get them on Amazon for about $7, maybe. By the time you get them shipped to you, they're 10 or 11 Don't fall for that. Spend the extra money and get some Tiptons or some A-Zooms. Um, my gun will not eject these things. The tips keep coming out. You have to take... I use a little little bitty jeweler's hammer. Tap them back in. I got to use my calipers and make sure they're the proper length and all that good stuff. Don't fall for them snap caps. Um, get you some good ones. Spend the money and get some good ones. Uh, what, what, like what, three extra dollars, four extra bucks? Now to save myself uh, double the shipping. So, uh, there's that part of the story. These are 50. Remember I showed you in a previous video, I tried to be stealthy with it and broke a 40-something-year-old magazine, the floor plate off. Man, I can't find a floor plate for that thing anywhere. Brand new magazines for it are going for 48 and 45 bucks a piece if you can find them. Um, well, I don't know how brand new they are, but they say they're new. Probably new garbage. Um, so I'm kind of stuck with that gun now. I wasn't real attached to it. It was my dad's. I kind of got it when he passed away last year. I never seen that gun before the day of my life. I wasn't. I'm not psychologically attached. Oh, it was my dad's. Well, big deal. Um, I got his muzzle loader. That one I did care a whole bunch about. I do have that one. I'll never sell that one. Uh, the Visor was going to go with two boxes of hollow rounds. Uh, three, two and a half or three boxes of ball ammo. Plus the one magazine and the gun itself. Uh, I wouldn't say it was in great condition or nothing like that, but it's, it's pretty fair. It's a nice gun. Um, it just needs probably needs some bluing work done to it but other than that i'm kind of stuck with that gun now because now i got a broken floor plate i took a little bitty drop of epoxy and stuck it on the magazine just for it to be there so i wouldn't lose it um i feel kind of crappy about that too so if i go putting 50 bucks a piece and two more magazines for it for a 32 acp with expensive ass ammo that thing, it'll sit in my gun safe. When I'm going to get that out when I'm feeling a little nostalgic and want to remember my dad. I don't need to shoot a gun to remember my dad. Especially one where the rounds are cost me 22 bucks a box for 32 ACP. That's crazy. Um, so that's the story on the old Visor. Y'all seen the Cobra Arms video? <laughs> I'll leave that alone. I really don't feel like going into that whole bunch of video. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't um i hate why haven't i done nothing video wise well 
running off, running out of gun stuff to do. My funds are limited. I'm not a big channel. I don't have people sending me free ammo to try. Uh, I don't have people sending me guns. Here, try this out. Here, try it and keep it. You know, I don't have none of that. So, we, I'm going to keep showing you this 1911. How many times am I going to show you that? I will once I get the frame done. And them new grips that I'm not supposed to know about. Um, they're pretty freaking awesome if you ask me. Um, anybody who has me on Facebook, they know what I'm talking about. Shh, don't tell no one. Um, my back, it's just been down and out, down and out, down and out. Um, got that fusion done. No sleep. My back's in sheer, utter pain. I can get up and move. Great. No problems. I can come out and hang out with the dogs in the yard now. I go walk around the blocks, go to the stores. Do I can, man, I can go do whatever I want, almost within reason. I can't get down on the ground and slide up underneath a vehicle. A, because I'm so big, and B, because I'm so big and with a few fresh few spine, that's probably not a wise idea. Um, yeah, so it's no sleep. It got me down and out. I hadn't felt like doing nothing. hadn't felt like talking. Nothing like that. Uh, talked to a fella tonight on my spinal cord stimulator video. It was pretty pretty good little chat. Made me feel all right. Made me want to come out and do a quick little session here. Um, now I want to get out and get some range footage of all these crappy guns I got. <laughs> Speaking of, kid next door come over and he had a bag in his hand and asked me could he bum a beer and I was like yeah sure and he's like here you go. I hand him a beer he handed me this bag. What's in the bag? I don't have it out here it's in the house. A Ziploc bag of uh, 50 cal round ball for the muzzle loaders. I had everything I need except for a good range rod. I won't use my wooden ones, but he got these babies at a sale, like a whole cigar box or something, he said, for like five bucks. I measured them. They're not 490, they're 488, so I might have to go with some pillow ticking on them or find a little bit thicker of a patch. Because all I got right now is 10,000, so cannot wait to get the smoke poles out in the field, hopefully before much longer. Um, that's going to be a whole lot of entertainment. I love black powder and everything that has to be getting dirty. The smoke, you can't see. Once you shoot, you can't see, which is kind of crazy because you're responsible for... Once you squeeze that trigger, you're fully responsible. Everyone knows, so... It will, you know, I'll make sure I'm... I go to an old abandoned coal mine and shoot down there, so... Only thing down there is a bunch of slag piles and water, so... That should be fun. I was pretty pretty stoked about that whenever you give me those. I'll never probably use stoked ever again in a sentence. So. But anyway, what else lies can I tell you? Um, you know, once again, no hardware. My, my stimulator shut off. I'm doing a little experiment right now. I got the stimulator shut off. So hopefully I'll be able to get back out and uh, do some more stuff. I do have... All the footage of me working on this thing. Let me. Um, um, I got all that footage. Man, it is a lot of footage. Some of it I made myself look stupid, but some of the crappy stuff I said, <laughs> tired. Well, I shouldn't have been working. I had a lesson learned. And I f forgot part of my gun when I put it back together. That's how tired I was. Lesson learned. Don't work on guns when you're tired. Put it in the safe and come back tomorrow. So uh, hopefully I can get some of that video stitched together and uh, put up. I, I don't know how that's going to work out. It was a whole bunch of clips. I probably ran, you know, ran things together and said the same thing five times like I, my ADD self does. But um, anyway, I don't know. I don't know where to go from there, but just want to do a quick little coffee break with DJ Porkchop here at the old bench. Uh, like I say, hopefully get some new stuff to bring to you soon. Uh, I think I found a honey of a deal on a Mod 2. Checking in on that. If so, I might have to do some wheeling and dealing. Brand new. Pretty good deal. Um, what else? I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know what else. So I'm probably going to shut up and get on out of here. I'm going to drink this coffee and uh, fiddle with this uh, thing for a little bit. Um, oh, hey, by the way, if anybody has any opinions on this here shock buff, I know I did a video on these before. I'm positive I did. Um, is there any reason why I should use these versus why I should not, other than the slingshot method? If I give up on the slingshot method and go with the uh, with the slide stop release, is it a wise idea to use these? It, it is aluminum frame, so I, I put it to whoever knows. I've never used them before, so... Anyway, I can't think what other lies I want to tell you. Um, other than the fact that the grace of my doctors, uh, sound advice, wise decisions, a very helpful wife, um, great nurses in the hospital, I'm actually able to get back up and go do stuff again. So, pretty happy about that. Not fully released from my doctor yet. I'm still actually on full restriction. I'm supposed to have that brace on, but because if you notice, I'm slouching. Um, hopefully, I get released pretty quick and I can get back at it and start doing absolutely nothing on video again for all six of my viewers. Notice I picked one up. Um, there would probably be more stimulator videos, I'm sure. I, if, you know, those are far and few between now. Uh, my journey's smoothing itself out finally. Um, pretty much 100% total relief on sciatica. I have none. Um, that's even with stimulator shut off. Since my fusion, I have no sciatica whatsoever. Knock on wood. Um, hopefully that continues. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here and finish this coffee up. Sit here by the old kerosene heater. For, I don't even know why I got on. It's 50 degrees, but that time of year got a little lavender no scent in there so isn't that kind of contradictory lavender no scent um so anyway that's what i'm gonna do catch you guys later and all that good jazz see ya